Hey guys and welcome back to another video. I've heard one person ask me how they update their phone when they already have the OTA and I assume they're already rooted so they have TWRP installed. So one could say you could flash stock recovery on it and then just accept the update normally, flash TWRP afterwards and then reroute. But otherwise, uh, but we can also use Flashfly to do this and it does it in a very, very easy way. So you can see I've already downloaded the system update, it's been verified and it's A-OK -okay to go. So all you need to do is go ahead and download Flashfire. Now that is available from the Google Play Store. I'll be leaving a link down in the more info as well. So once you open up Flashfire, once you accept the Super SU prompt, and it does is enumerating partitions and doing all these other behind the scenes stuff, it will actually detect the OTA for you. Now this works best on Nexus devices. I've heard on the, I've seen on the OnePlus, or at least the OnePlus One, that you have to go look for it uh, within a folder. But anyway, we're gonna. This already detects it, and we're gonna hit OK. And that will actually load up all the instructions that we need for the OTA to work its stuff. So as you can see here, these are the instructions that Flashfire is going to go follow through. So it's going to erase the cache partition. So it's going to delete it and then format it. And then now it's going to use the update.zip and then it's going to restore the boot and recover images. So I assume if you have a custom kernel, uh, but really what that is for, I think, is for SuperSU to work properly. But other than that, it still injects SuperSU, so not too sure. Maybe that's just you know doing two things at once, but that's fine. We're also going to preserve recovery, and it's going to normally reboot. I assume you could probably change it to reboot to the boot letter. Yes, we can. And of course, we can choose to restore the boot. So yeah, we'll leave those options as default, and we're going to tap Flash down there, and we're going to tap OK. Now, this will reboot our phone into a little screen where a flash fire can load everything really nicely done and we shall see the pro uh, the process of doing this and afterwards we should be on the MTC 19x rather than the MTC 19v build of Android as you can hear see here it started we're doing the boot image and recovery so it's already done well the uh, it's restored the stock boot and recovery images, I think that's what it was meaning and so that is to get our image or at least our OTA flashed in currently so it's going to verify the system partition and make sure it's untouched and that is how OTAs work nowadays so luckily with the introduction of systemless root it's been out for a while now uh, this makes it a whole lot easier to do over here you can probably also see that the target and the source are also uh, relative as well, so you can see I was currently on the MTC 19V and we're moving to the MTC 19X. So now it's just doing uh, all its stuff and it's going to patch the system, uh, I think it's sector or block, block wise, which uh, reduces OTA sizes by updating only the things that it needs to update. So you probably saw that the OTA was about 17, 18 megabytes, which isn't a lot now. So yeah, that's going to update those images here. So the system vendor image and maybe the recovery will be updated so we're just going to wait for this process to finish and I'll probably fast forward it to the end so we've we've just witnessed it finishing writing partitions and all that now it's going to install SuperSU and then afterwards, it's going to restore our recovery image, so TWRP, back in its rightful place. And now it's going to reboot back into Android. Now, as usual, with installing SuperSU like this, the, your phone will have to go through the boot up process a couple more times than usual, but that is all right, as that is the norm of the process. So after that, I'll probably skip ahead and show you the final product when we're booted back into Android.